Welcome to week five of the Coffee Cup Prompt for October, which is index cards. We're going to make these three things out of index cards today, echo printing without using boiling water. There were five Sundays in October, so you're receiving five videos of index cards. This is my studio. I call my channel Two Old Crows Mixed Media. This is nestled behind my house in the North Georgia mountains. My friend, Callie, is grazing in the yard today. You can sh see that she is on the wrong side of the pasture fence. But my husband has let her out to enjoy some of the grass that is in the front inside yard, or the back inside yard, I guess I should say. So come on in, and let's get started on today's video. I have chosen to echo print on the index cards today, and I wanted to do that without boiling them because they're kind of fragile. I gathered some asparagus fern, red maple leaves, and oak leaves. I'm first going to utilize the red maple. I'm placing them on the index card, sandwiching them with a sheet of acetate, and I'm going to pull in just a flat hammer and hammer away producing an imprint with the impression or with the hit of that hammer. So I'm pounding, 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 giving it some pretty good wax to make sure that I get some transfer from that leaf onto this index card. So let's see how we're doing. Looks like we could use a little more whacking. So we will just give it a few more hits and make sure I use the acetate to make sure that I got every position on the leaf because I wanted a nice, a nice imprint. <clears throat> so let's see how that works. So I'm going to pull that acetate off, pick up my leaves, and see if we got an imprint. And it looks like we did. You know, we got some of that reddish color, which is nice, and it will make a nice background for something. Now I want to use that asparagus fern because it is very rich in color and it still has some body to it. So I'm hoping that it will print very nicely on this index card. So I'm going to do the same process. This is technique number one. I'm going to show you yet another way to get this echo print without using boiling water. So stick with me. But let's just get through this fern, and then we'll try the oak leaf, and then we'll move on to technique number two. So there we go. So I think that turned out pretty nice as well. So now we've made two prints with just a hammer and the foliage. So now here is the, a portion of a, an oak leaf that I pulled off the tree behind the barn. And let me just hammer away. And I just kind of want to try each of these and see how this color is going to produce directly onto the card. And there's the imprint of that oak leaf. So now let's move on to technique number two. I am going to put my index card line side down on my hot shot, my Sussex hot shot. I'm going to sandwich it to between my two pieces of acrylic. I have all my platforms in place and I'm running it through. Now I saw this over on Sasebo which is another channel, and I will link her channel below because she did a complete video with a lot of different mordants, a lot of different leaves, and, and she was doing um, testing and experimenting. I'm not going to go through all that process here, so I'll link her video down below if you'd like to go take a look at that. I would like to give credit where credit is due here. I am trying her technique, and now I'm going to utilize it on my fern leaves and run those through. Now, the nice thing about applying the suppressor with a hot shot is that you get an image on two cards at the same time. 
I suppose that I, you could do that too with the hammering technique, but you can't see what you're hammering. So you would have to be very diligent about hitting every spot on the card. So here, here is that uh, fern. I think this is, this is a game changer. I th think this technique saves so much time, so much mess, so much preparation, and it is just so easy to do. So there you go. Both of the ferns. Now, let me just show you all of the no cards that I have received by hammering and running the ferns through my cystics. I happen to be very partial to the ferns. It is the top of my husband has an asparagus bed. This is the top of the plant as it grows. And I think it just produced some great prints. And I think it's perfect. The size of the index card is perfect. Now, over on Sasebo, she utilized a mordant after she had run them through. And she did that to preserve the imprint. And I think also to give it some more definition. So I have some iron water. This, these are sage leaves that I ran through, by the way. So you're seeing a, just a different leaf that I didn't mention earlier. These are, are the sage. But I am just dipping my brush in that iron water. And all that iron water is is rusted bits. You put a little vinegar in, and then you fill it with, with water and let it sit. It takes about a week for the water to actually mature so that you have iron water. So I've had it sitting, mine's been sitting for a week or two. And as I put it over the imprint, you can see on some that it is bringing it out more and on others where it's really not giving any definition at all. But I, I am going to go through this process on all of them. And then the tray to my left that you see is just plain water. And um, I did put a little bit of vinegar in that water. And I'm going to dip these in that to kind of stop any process that that mordant might be providing. I hope I'm making sense. And if you want really clear, defined definitions on this process, please head over to Sazebo and, and take a look at her channel. Now that we have finished echo printing all of our index cards and they are dry, I am taking my scissors and just going around the edge of one as I am getting ready to make the card that I am going to utilize as a card to put down inside a journal that will hold other pieces of ephemera, if you will. So this is, will be the front. I have roughed up the edges, and I'm just inking around the outside to give it that vintage feel, giving it a little vintage photo within the frame as well. So with that done, I'm now going to measure and cut a piece of this craft paper it is a uh, craft uh, cardstock. It was actually um, some cards that I had purchased, and, and I'm going to use it as a card, but I'm also going to just cut one up and utilize it in the construction of my focal point. So I'm cutting that just slightly larger, about a half inch, not a half inch, quarter of an inch larger than my focal image or the, that index card that is becoming our focal point. I will ink around the outside edge of that with a vintage photo and then glue the index card into place. And I think that looks nice. I think that that craft works well with the vintage photo ink and with the picture of the fern. So another use for these index cards is this focal point on the front of this card that I'm going to place a pocket or two pockets inside to hold ephemera, notes, journaling space inside a journal. So there we go. 
And now to represent it on the card, I am just stamping with a vintage photo distress oxide ink, and I'm utilizing a script stamp just to cover that card with that script stamp to just give some interest or noise, if you will, behind my focal point. So let me glue that down into place. And then I will ink around the outside edges of the card, the spine of the card. I'll turn it over, do the same thing on the inside. So I will ink away. I'm not going to bore you with that, but um, it will be done. So let me just set that aside for now. And let's work on a tag. So I'm pulling one more of those index cards. I have a hotel key card that I've cut a little diagonal off. And I'm going to use that to create my tag. But to give the tag more substance, I am just gluing it to yet another index card. So we have a tag created out of two index cards glued together with the top one having been echo printed, either hammered or run through my uh, rolling mill or run through my hotshot. Now I'm just putting that tag edge on. And let me get out this uh, rusty hinge. I haven't used this color before, so I thought this would be a good time to check it out. And, and I do kind of like it. It has a lot of red within. So I think it looks good with this. What do you think? And it's a brand new, brand new ink pad. So it is certainly <laughs> de delivering the color. You know, I think I get used to using ink pads that have been in my stash for a while, and then when I get one that's brand new, I'm shocked at how much, how much ink it delivers. So now that I have it um, brandished, if you will, around the edges, I'm just going to take that script stamp and, you know, put it in a few places along the tag, and that is all I am going to do. Of course, you know, my hands always get the back messy, so we'll just act like that was intentional and plop down some additional rusty hinge on the back with a little bit of that script stamping as well. And I think this makes a nice tag. There we go. Now, I have some sebum binding that I purchased some time ago, and I have it in all sorts of colors. So I'm going to see if I can locate a color that will work well with this uh, fern on this rusty hinge. Ink. Let me just round off those corners on the bottom to give it a little more shape. And I'm going around once again just to make sure I don't have any white edges showing. And then I went around with a vintage photo after the, the rusty hinge. I think that looks good with because I plan on putting it down inside this, so I think those are going to look good together. So there is that seam binding, that green seam binding. I'll just tie that at the top and trim that off. And I think we have a very nice echo printed card. Now, I really liked what the iron water did to these maple leaves. As I let them sit and as I let them dry with that iron water, 
this is the result that I had. And I thought this would be great for a hidden paper clip. So I'm going to fold that in half. Decide on my width. And trim that to about a little over about one and three quarters inches. So now I have a nice start for a hidden paper clip. And I want to kind of remove a lot of that white and I've pulled out a um, distress oxide in a yellow. I'm trying to think of what that color is. I think it's twisted citron. And I'll just go along the outside edge. I'm just taking my wet baby wipe and kind of moving that ink around a little bit more. And I can kind of see that that white still shows on the inside. So I want to open that up and just take this and um, move it around on the inside. And then we'll go around the outside edge with the vintage photo just to really define those edges. Okay, so that is my pretty part of my hidden paper clip. Now to get the functional piece in place. So I've folded another, um, just a white index card in half and cut it to right about the same size. And now I am marking where that um, it, paper clip is and just slicing open right along the fold line the width of that paper clip. That way I can stick that inside and pop that paper clip through there and put a little tag on it. And I think that will I think that will be cute. So let me position my paper clip and I'm going to keep it in place with some of this painter's tape. It's not going to show, but it will reinforce the placement. And there we go. And I think there's too much width on, on the uh, functional piece. Because you can kind of see a lot of that white. I'm just adding some more ink around the edge. See how that kind of peeks out on the edge? So I'm just going to trim that up on both sides and just make it slightly smaller than my pretty piece. And now I think we're ready to go. So let's ink around the outside edge of that so we don't have any white edges showing. And I'll just use Vintage Photo for that. Put some glue onto both sides. And then I'm just going to slide it inside my pretty piece and glue it down. And now I have a functional hidden paper clip. So back with some of that green seam binding and I'll just tie that at the top. This is a real wide seam binding so I'm getting quite a few pieces out of one, one little section. Now let's just stick that through that paper clip.
you know, trim those off. And we now have item number three out of index cards. And I think index cards really are great to make these hidden paper clips. I love the hidden paper clips and this, see how it just, you can put it on the top of a journal page, you can put it on the side of the journal page and let the ribbon flag out, flag it from the top. It's just, I think, a very functional piece. So now I want to create a little pocket to hold my tag and my hidden paper clip. We'll make two pockets, actually. So we'll make one horizontal and one vertical. And I'm just gluing them into place. I'm not going to go through a, an expansive tutorial on how to make these pockets. I think they're pretty self-explanatory. And now I have something to hold the elements that we have created today. We've made this, car this card. We've made a hidden paper clip. And we have made a tag. This is the hidden paper clip. I think it is my favorite of all three things this week. This is the card that when it opens up, it has the two pockets to hold everything. So I hope you're enjoying these coffee cup, cup prompts. I hope you will follow along. And if you want to stop over to my Facebook group, you can find us over on Facebook group at Two Old Crows Mixed Media and post your picture and share what you've done. I've watched some of the women that are following along and the things that they're creating is absolutely beautiful. So I hope that I can inspire you to join us over there and share your work. I shall say bye for now and come back next Sunday for the November prompt. We are getting ready to pull something new and November will be a totally different challenge.